In this video, we're going to focus on naming acids. So let's say if you want to name H2SO4, how would you do it? Well, first, you need to know some rules. If it contains a polyatomic ion with the word 8, all you need to add is ick. If it has a polyatomic ion with the word it, replace it with the suffix is. And add the word acid at the end, by the way. Now, if it's a monatomic ion with the end in ide, you need to add the prefix hydro plus the suffix ic. So let's look at H2SO4. So H2SO4 contains the polyatomic ion sulfate. And to name acids, you do need to know your polyatomic ions. So we need to replace 8 with ick. So we're going to add the word sulfur and then ick to it. So it's going to be called sulfuric acid. Now what if we want to name H2SO3? H2SO3 contains the polyatomic ion sulfite. And sulfite has the end in ite, which we need to replace with is. So let's start with the element sulfur and add the suffix is. So it's going to be sulfurous acid. Now what about this one, H2S? So H2S contains the monoatomic ion sulfide, which is S2 minus. Now because it has the end in IDE, we need to add the prefix hydro, and then we're going to add the word sulfur, that's the element, and then the suffix IC. So it's hydrosulfuric acid. Let's try some more examples. So what about HClO4? What's the name of this acid? So what is the name of the polyatomic ion ClO4? This is called perchlorate. Now since it ends with the suffix 8, we need to replace it with ick. So we're going to write the same name, but instead of saying perchlorate, it's going to be perchloric acid. Now what about HClO? Go ahead and name this acid. So the oxy acid HClO has the polyatomic ion hypochlorite. So to name the acid, all we need to do is replace the suffix "-ite", with "-is". So it's going to be called hypo chlorous acid. Try this one. Name the binary acid HCl. So HCl contains the monatomic ion known as chloride. So to name the acid, we need to add the prefix hydro. And then Let's write this part of the name. Instead of saying chlorine, we're going to say, we're going to replace the i with the ick. So hydrochloric acid. Now let's try some other examples. How would you name HNO3 and HNO2? So HNO3 contains the polyatomic ion nitrate. So we need to replace the suffix 8 with ick. So we're still going to write the NITR part. And then let's add ick to it. So it's going to be nitric acid. HNO2 has the polyatomic ion nitrite. So let's rewrite this part, and then let's replace "-ite", with "-is", so it's nitrous acid. 
Now, how would you name the acid HI? HI contains the monatomic ion iodide. So we need to add the prefix hydro, the word IO or IOD, and then replace the IDE part with ic. So it's hydroiodic acid. Try this one. HC2H3O2. What is the name of that particular acid? So let's find the polyatomic ion first. C2H3O2 minus. This is called acetate. So we're going to keep the part without the 8. And we're going to replace the 8 with ic. So it's going to be acetic acid. How would you name, or rather, how would you write the formula for phosphoric acid? So let's work backwards. So what's the first thing we should do in this particular example? The first thing that you need to look for is the polyatomic ion that is associated with phosphoric acid. We don't have the word hydro, so we know it's not a monoatomic ion. So it has to be a polyatomic ion. And because we could see the ic part of the acid, we know it's associated with 8, so it's going to be phosphate. The formula for phosphate is PO4, 3 minus. Now, take a look at the negative charge. Because the charge is negative 3, we need to add three hydrogens to it to neutralize that negative three charge. Each hydrogen ion has a plus one charge. So it's going to be H3PO4. Simply add three hydrogens to it, put it in the front, and that's how you can name, or rather write the formula for phosphoric acid. Let's try another example. Try this one. Phosphorus acid. So what is the formula for phosphorus acid? What polyatomic ion corresponds to it? So we could see the suffix is, so we know it's associated with phosphite. And the formula for phosphite is PO3 negative 3. So we have to add three hydrogens to it. So the formula is going to be H3PO3. What is the formula for carbonic acid? Feel free to take a minute and try that example. So once again, we don't have the prefix hydro, so we know it's a polyatomic ion. And because we see the suffix ic, it's associated with 8. So what is the formula for carbonate? The formula for carbonate is CO3, 2 minus. So we have a negative 2 charge. We need to add two hydrogens to it. So it's going to be H2CO3. This is the formula for carbonic acid. Now, what about this example? Hydrobromic acid. What is the formula? So notice that we have the prefix hydro. That's a good indication that it's a monoatomic ion, most likely. There are some exceptions. So the monoatomic ion for Br is simply bromide. So whenever you see IDE, it's associated with the prefix hydro and IC. Now that part is pretty much a guarantee. That that's usually the case. The formula for bromide is Br with a negative 1 charge. Now since we have a negative 1 charge, we need to add only one hydrogen to neutralize it. So therefore, the formula for the acid is simply HBr. Now consider this example. It's a little unusual, but we can still get the answer. Hydrocyanic acid. 
So we have the prefix hydro and the suffix IC. So it indicates that it's probably a monatomic ion. However, we also know that it has to have the end in ide. So this has to be associated with cyanide. Now cyanide is not a monatomic ion. It's actually polyatomic. It has two atoms. But nevertheless, it does have the suffix ide, which is associated with hydro plus IC. So that rule is pretty much intact. Since it has a negative one charge, we're going to add only one hydrogen to it. So it's going to be HCN. That's the formula for hydrocyanic acid. 